Hi, I'm Sean. Welcome to ShyChemTutor.com. Today we'll be going over an acid base problem from organic chemistry. So let's have a look. Alright, so the question asks which nitrogen in the ring of the amino acid histidine is a stronger base? Uh, we've got this big complicated molecule here, histidine, um, but we're really only concerned with the ring part here. So we can kind of just get rid of this bottom half and just focus on this ring. Uh, we can also label these nitrogens, one and two. Let's do a quick refresher on what an acid uh, and base is. Um, from our general chemistry, we have the Bronsted Lori definition. Uh, we also have the Lewis definition. Uh, so, Bronsted Lori acid, remember, is a proton donor, and a proton is just um, hydrogen. And then the yeah, opposite so of that would be a proton acceptor. The Lewis definition is a little bit different. Um, it deals with actually electron pairs. So Lewis acid is an electron acceptor. And the base, of course, is an electron donor. So how does that help us in this problem? Well, which one is the better proton acceptor or which one is a better electron donor? Um, we can see that nitrogen one doesn't even have a proton you know, to give. Um, so we might wanna be concerned with the Lewis definition and be focused on these electron pairs. Um, also we remember that a stronger base will have a weaker conjugate acid. For example, sodium hydroxide, we know is a strong base. The conjugate acid of OH would be just water. And we know that water is a pretty weak acid. So can we get any information from these, uh, the conjugate acids of uh, these nitrogens, let's have a look. So nitrogen one, conjugate acid, NH plus. Conjugate acid of two would be NH plus, two, NH two plus. Um, if we go to our pKa tables, from organic chemistry, these two ions aren't in there, so that doesn't really help us. All right, so we have to go through a different approach here. What factors determine acid strength? Um, we have inductive effects. So an inductive effect is a dipole that kind of pulls electron density away from a molecule or from a proton. So for instance, this molecule, carboxylic acid, has a dipole that draws electron density away from this OH bond and makes it more acidic. We also have the electronegativity of the adjacent atom. So electronegativity. We'll bring up hydrochloric acid here as a good example. The Cl is very electronegative. So there is um, kind of a partial positive, a partial negative charge here. So this H is very acidic. A third factor is hybridization. Of the orbitals. So SP is more acidic than an SP2, which is more acidic than an SP3 orbital. We know this because an S orbital is less stable than a P orbital. 
and because this sp orbital is 50% s and 50% p, it's less stable and therefore more acidic than this uh, sp3 hybridized orbital. Hybridization is important in this question actually, we'll, we'll see soon. Um, the fourth way that acid strength is determined is hydrogen bonding or any kind of intermolecular bonding. Hydrogen bonding stabilizes hydrogen and makes it less acidic. Um, for this particular problem, it's not really relevant. Fifth way is intramolecular. So that means within the molecule itself. And again, that kind of, that stabilizes just as intermolecular bonding would. Um, there doesn't appear to be any kind of intramolecular bonding between um, in this area of the molecule. And the last and perhaps most important way is resonance stabilization. For instance, phenol is especially acidic because the conjugate base draw it, is resonance stabilized, so this electron pair can go into the ring and become resonance stabilized, and you can draw a couple more resonance structures, um, we don't have much room here, but for this problem we were really concerned with six and three. All right, let's make some space here, huh? Okay, I made some more room. I blew up this graphic so we can see it better. I highlighted the acidity factors we're concerned with in this problem, residence and hybridization. Now, it might be smart to go around this ring and note the hybridization of each atom. Um, we know that each carbon double bond has to be an sp2 hybridized, sp2. All right, so what hybridization are these nitrogens? Uh, this nitrogen has a direct double bond to this carbon, so we can safely assume it's sp2. This nitrogen appears to be sp3 initially, but um, this lone pair is actually part of the ring. So that means this is a sort of a pseudo double bond and we're gonna call it sp2 as well. So the whole ring is sp2 hybridized. Remember what we said about hybridization acidity? sp2 is most acidic, while sp2 is second acidic, which is more acidic than sp3. So that doesn't really help us too much. However, this lone pair here is in a different hybridization than this lone pair. And we'll see that in a second. All right, so resonance. Remember that resonance is only possible when we move electrons around, right? Now, is it possible to move these electrons around? Um, it may be. Let's look at nitrogen one. We know it's sp2 hybridized. What does that actually mean? Well. We have an S, a 2S orbital, and three 2P orbitals, all combined sort of in a mathematical averaging, if you will, to form a sp2 orbital. However, that leaves a P orbital by itself, okay? So this double bond is comprised of a P orbital and also an sp2 orbital, okay? This sigma bond is comprised of an sp2 orbital. So what does that leave us here with? It leaves us with an sp2 orbital. 
this lone pair is an sp2 orbital because we've already accounted for the p orbital the p orbital is being taken up by the pi bond here so it leaves us, us with three sp2 hybridized orbitals okay now nitrogen 2 also sp2 hybridized we know that there's no double bond adjacent to this nitrogen so there's no p orbital being taken up by a bond right there however this bond, the sigma bond, is an sp2 orbital. Hybridized, sorry. This bond is an sp2 hybridized as well. This NH bond is also sp2 hybridized. So what does that leave us with? That leaves us with a p orbital, right? Because there's three sp2 hybrid, uh, hybridized orbitals and there's one p orbital for an sp2 hybridized bond. So that means that this lone pair has to be in a p orbital. So these two lone pairs are in two different kinds of orbitals, right? This lone pair is in a p orbital, and these lone pairs are in an sp2 orbital. And that, we're going to see, makes all the difference in the acidity or basicity of these atoms. Remember that resonance stabilization will make an atom less acidic, right? Because they're stabilized. Um, so that means this NH bond will be resonance stabilized if this H leaves, such as hydroxide, comes and rips off this hydrogen. That lone pair will be stabilized by resonance, right? We can sort of see this another way visually um, through our model kits. So I've actually built this histidine ring um, for you guys. So this is nitrogen two, this is nitrogen one, this is the rest of the histidine molecule. Um, so we can see how it's planar, right? It has like a piece of paper is planar. Um, you can see that the lone pairs, these little dog ears here, are located in different sort of areas, right? Uh, this one's popping out, out of the ring, whereas this one's popping adjacent to the ring, right? Um, parallel to it. This is perpendicular. So these are both sp2 hybridized nitrogens. However, this lone pair here is p hybridized, right? Whereas this lone pair is sp hybridized, sp2 hybridized, sorry. So this lone pair can bounce back and forth into the ring. It has the uh, mobility to do that, right? This lone pair is kind of stuck here, right? We can also think of this in terms of accessibility. Uh, this pair of electrons is less accessible than this pair, only because this pair can you know, freely jump back and forth into this ring, right? Because of resonance. This lone pair is stuck here, it has nowhere to go. And because this pair is more accessible than this pair, just because this pair is you know, jumping around so much, and because of that accessibility, this lone pair is more basic. Because this pair's jumping in the ring freely, whereas this pair is stuck. If an acid comes along, this lone pair can freely grab it, whereas this lone pair you know, has kind of trouble grabbing it because it's in the ring most of the time. So we discovered that N1 is more basic because the electron pair is in an sp2 hybridized orbital. And two is more acidic because it is resonance stabilized. All right, that concludes this problem on the acidity of the amino acid histidine, where we use resonance and hybridization to explain uh, which one is the stronger base. Um, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.